Hey guys, welcome back. So, leg day today, lower body split. Now, instead of doing this on Friday, because I did upper body Thursday, I had it planned for Friday, but I ended up doing it on Saturday because my back was like freaking killing me on Friday, so I decided to take an off day. So I ended up doing it on Saturday. But right here, just warming up with jump rope just to get the blood flowing. And if you're wondering why I'm speaking like over the video instead of during the workout, um, my brother had his like gender reveal party for his his daughter. Now we know he's gonna be having a daughter. So that's exciting. And there was like so much shit going on in my house. So it was very loud. Everyone was home. My mom was cleaning. It was very loud. So I just decided to do a voiceover for this video. The next one I'll be back to speaking during the workout. So if you guys prefer that. If you don't, if you prefer this, just let me know in the comments. But we're starting off with leg curls. This is what I always usually start off with. I just like warming up my knees, my legs. And this is like my favorite workout to do that. I used to do leg extensions too, but I'm not really able to do that in my basement. And this day was, the weather was shitty. I'll just put it as that. And I had work. I was supposed to have work. Uh, I coach baseball and we we're supposed to have a double header. And I get to the field and it was already raining for like three hours before I get there. And the tournament directors, so not the place I work for, but the people who run the tournaments that we play in, they decided not to cancel until we got there and we were 20 minutes into our pregame warmup. So big waste of time and the field was 35 minutes away. So I had to drive basically an hour and 10 minutes for nothing really. So I was pretty pissed off. But anyways, back to leg curls. I do three sets here and these are some great views. Holy shit. Look at that. Damn. But uh, did three sets, all of them to failure. And that's what I always usually do on leg curls. I did go a little heavier in weight on these. This is the last set, so I dropped 10 pounds, but I had uh, two 25s on and then a 10. And you guys are probably like, that's like no weight. But the thing about this leg curl machine, it's like one of those old ass ones that I got at Sports Authority like a long ass time ago when I was like a kid. My dad got it. And, you know, I don't even think Sports Authority is a, is a thing anymore. So it's very heavy. You don't really need to add a lot of weight to get a good pump in because the whole lever action thing, it's like, I think it's like 50 pounds itself. So, or maybe even more. It feels like more. So yeah, that's leg curls. And then we're on the calves. Now calves, I do want to discuss calves right now because I need to build my calves up. You'll see in uh, my next video, my next upper body video, my calves are behind the eight ball. So the old school proportion metrics, they say neck, arms, and calves, they all need to be the same. Okay, so if your neck is, or I'm sorry, if your arms are 14 inches, let's say, so does your neck and your calves. That's what they should be. They should all be 14 inches. Those are the old school proportion metrics. That's what Steve Reeves talked about, and that's what they believed in back then. So my calves are 15 right now. My neck's 16 and like a quarter, and my arms are 16. So yeah, not really quite there yet with the calves, but I think I'm going to get there because I'm doing this new program, and this is the first time I've added weight to my calf raises. Now I'm using just a 20 pound dumbbell here, but I used to just do body weight to failure and it wasn't single leg. It was like double leg. And I did that for a long time. So I think my calves got pretty used to that movement and they were just like, yeah, we're done grown. And that's usually what happens with any type of muscle. I mean, if you keep doing the same shit over and over again and then expecting different, like expecting different results, that's, that's the definition of insanity. So I'm happy I'm finally starting to switch things up with every single type of movement because I feel like I neglected calves quite a lot throughout the years. And when I used to go to commercial gym, I would do uh, the donkey calf raise machines, you know, the ones that like go over your shoulders and they have weight. I would do those 
I never really liked the seated cab raises. Those always kind of pissed me off. But, you know, I, and I hope I'm not boring you guys. You know, a lot, of, a lot of people get bored from calves. You know, I'm just getting bored watching this right now. Like, it's literally just a calf moving up. Or, here we go. Now we got a profile shot. But it's literally just a fucking leg moving up and down. And I don't know, unless you have like a calf fetish or something. I don't know. I, I don't see how you would find enjoyment in watching it. But it is something that you need to get done if you want to build a nice aesthetic and proportional body. It's just, you have to go through it. No matter how boring it is. And it may look boring, but this shit was fucking burning when I was doing it. And I'm not just saying that. You can tell in my face, you know, I have cramped a few times from doing calf raises. So definitely not an easy uh, part of the workout to get done. And especially when I'm doing it before my squat movements. And the reason for that is just, I like warming up my ankles a little bit before I get into anything squat related. Now this is the first squat movement right here. And I just decided to do kind of like a warm up squat, like front squat movement. The dumbbell I'm holding is only like 95 pounds, but I got a pretty good burn. And I did two sets of 15 here. I wasn't trying to do anything special. I wasn't going to failure. I wasn't, you know, I just wasn't going for a burnout or anything like that. This was literally just getting my legs warmed up for the barbell hack squat that I would be doing after. Now, I usually do a barbell back squat uh, parallel, though. So I put a bench behind me and a block. And I'll talk about the wood block that my heels are on in a second. But I usually do either barbell back squat or barbell front squat before I get into the barbell hack squat because it just attacks the quads even more. Now, for the seat that I'm sitting back on, if you go any lower than that, by old school, uh, metrics, you know, they say it's wasted movement if you go any lower than parallel. And they also say it builds more of your glutes up, which I talked about this previously in a few of my videos. I'm really not worried about building my glutes up. Everything right now is quad dominant. That's all I'm focusing on are my quads. And this was one of the ways that I'm allowed to do that just by, it's basically like you're sitting down into like a kitchen chair at the kitchen table, like you're going to eat dinner or some shit. You're just sitting down and getting up. And I did two sets of 15 from that. Now, when it comes to the block I'm using, uh, another old school thing that they said, or rather that they believed was that if you didn't use this, you know, it was bad for your knees. If you squatted flat footed, they said it was terrible for your knees. And right here, you can see we're getting into the barbell hack squat. But yeah, they believe that it was bad for your knees if you weren't raised up and that was your heels. If your heels weren't raised up at least like an inch to two inches. So I've been trying it out and I've only been doing it for like a week and a half. And honestly, I haven't seen that much of a difference yet, but it does feel a little better on my knees, but time will tell. I probably won't see a difference to like, I don't know, four weeks in, five weeks in. But yeah, that's why I'm doing it. Also, it's kind of isolating my quads a little more too. And that was another reason old school guys talked about it and preferred it over just flat footed. But I feel like it's isolating my quads a lot because my knees are kind of going over my toes now instead of just kind of staying either over top or behind them. And, you know, that movement would be much more glute dominant. And then this will be quad dominant. You can see here my cousin here, he like came over and he was, he was hanging out with me, but you know, the mind muscle connection, the focus, it doesn't go away. I'm still focusing here. You know, he was probably cracking jokes. I know he was cracking jokes during this entire set, but or right before it, but you know, you gotta get your workout in. And I only did two sets here. So, and I, I did go hard. It wasn't like I was going easy. I did go easier than my first leg day of the week, which was on the Tuesday. Now I had Wednesday, Thursday, Friday off. So that's three days off until I did legs again, which I don't know, they were still kind of sore by the time I got to like Friday night, Saturday morning. And I think that's because I did the barbell back squat and the barbell hack squat. And then right here, we're just doing some posing. Now, posing, 
My legs, I wouldn't like to say that they look small, but I have thin legs. Genetically, if you guys saw all my family members, like my dad, uh, his dad, on my mom's side, none of them have naturally like thick legs. None of them. So genetically, I'm not gifted with like really massive, like thick legs, but that doesn't mean I can't get nice striations, you know, good separation of my quads. You can see right here. And I hate to be in my underwear, but this is really the only way to show your quads. You can see right there, nice striations and separation. But yeah, that wraps up the video, guys. And I'll see you in the next one, probably in like a day or two, for upper body. So peace out.